Hi everyone, this is Professor Mayunga and you are watching Uda Plus, the professional CAD CAM solution provider. Let's get started. Hello viewers, today I am going to show finite element analysis of a composite cylinder in which heat transfer will take place by convection from inside to outside, right? It will be done using ANSYS mechanical epidural, right? Let us see the statement of the problem. Obtain the temperature distribution for the composite cylinder inside which a hot fluid is flowing and the outer surface is exposed to surrounding atmospheric conditions. Assume perfect continuity between the layers. Capture the temperature values at the interface materials. Use an element size of 0.002 meter or less, right? Let us see the drawing. This is the drawing actually. It is having composite cylinders having different ranges of radius ranging from 0.025 meter to 0 0.5, 0 0.085 and 0 0.1 meter. These are the different ranges of radius and we are having three different elements mainly. This is element number one, this is element number two and element number three. The annulus space between R2 and R1 is material number one and again the annular space between R2 and R3 is element number 2 and finally the annular space between R4 and R3 we are having element 3. So three different elements are there with thermal conductivity is 30 watt per meter degree Kelvin, 15 watt per meter degree Kelvin and finally the last one is having thermal conductivity of 0.1 watt per meter degree Kelvin. And also atmospheric air condition you can see convective heat transfer coefficient is equal to 50 watt per meter square degree Kelvin and atmospheric temperature is 300 degree Kelvin. Similarly, inside you can see we are inside we are having hot fluid and convective heat transfer coefficient for hot fluid is 300 watt per meter square degree Kelvin and temperature inside is 500 degree Kelvin. So these are the conditions. With these conditions, we need to find out the temperature at the interfaces. That means we need to find out temperature at the at this location, this location, and this location at four different interfaces. Right at the end of radius R1, R2. R3 and R4. We have to find out the temperature of these things, right? Okay. So without wasting time, let us start our analysis using ANSYS mechanical epidural, right? First of all, we need to create a directory, and in that directory, we need to save everything. We are not doing this one, but you have to do this one, right? Now, next to that, we need to change the title name, and that can be done from file. Change title, and we are keeping the name of the title as FEA13. okay to see the title you can click plot replot it will be visible at the lower left corner next to that we need to define what type of analysis it is it will come from references definitely it is a thermal analysis so thermal analysis checked in and okay next to that we need to define elemental properties and that will come from preprocessor element type add edit delete we need to add it we are considering solid element and by default it is coming quad 4 node 55 okay close it next to that we need to provide material properties we're having three different elements within three different thermal conductivities right so material properties material models thermal conductivity and isotopic so we are having three different thermal conductivities of 30 15 and 0.1 right First one is 30 watt per meter degree Kelvin. Okay. You can define different material. Material ID 2 and thermal conductivity of this one will be 15 watt per meter degree Kelvin. And for the third material, material ID 3, thermal conductivity will be 0 0.1 watt per meter degree Kelvin. So we have defined three different materials with thermal conductivities, right? Let us close this one. Next to that, we need to start modeling. Modeling, create areas, and we want to create circular areas. And it will be better to create annulus circular area. And in this case, we are having four different circles, right? Let us see that radius of these things. First radius will be 0 0.025 and second one will be 0 0.05. So radius one is 0 0.025 and second one will be 
0.05 apply first annulus circles are made second one you need to make again it will be starting from 0.05 and next radius will be 0.085 apply and the last one it will be starting from 0.085 and finishing one it will be 0.1 meter okay these are the four different circles and this first one annular space is of element number one this is element number two and this is element number three right okay next to that these different circles what we made these are not connected together that to be connected using glue so that can be done from operate booleans and that can be glued together to make this one completely connected together so glue areas let us select the areas one by one all the areas are selected so the elements are glued together right it is done modeling is complete next to that we need to mesh it right for meshing first of all we need to see the mesh attributes and we need to define specific material for different areas right so mesh attributes picked areas let us select area with material id number one this one selected apply and it will be having material number one apply next to that we need to select material id 2 this one okay apply and for this area it will be having material id 2 apply and the last one okay now it will be having material id number three so we have defined the specific areas with the different id numbers with different thermal connectivities okay the inner annular space is having thermal connectivity k1 which is 30 watt per meter degree kelvin the second one is having material id2 which is 15 watt per meter degree kelvin and the third one is having material id3 and it is having thermal conductivity as 0.1 watt per meter degree kelvin right let us repeat this one again the first annular space is having material id1 with thermal conductivity 30 watt per meter degree kelvin the second annular space is having material id number 2 with thermal conductivity 15 watt per meter degree kelvin and third one is having material id3 with thermal conductivity 0.1 watt per meter degree kelvin right this is done next to that we need to mesh it you can start from meshing here size controls manual size all areas and you can define the length size of this one equal to 0 0.005 okay let us mesh it mesh areas free pick all so meshing is done next to that we need to apply our boundary conditions that will be coming from loads first of all we need to define what type of analysis it is it is a new analysis and we are performing steady state analysis okay now define loads it will be thermal convection on lines let us select inner lines in the form of quadrants okay it will be having convective heat transfer coefficient as 300 watt per meter square degree kelvin at a temperature of 500 degree centigrade so convective heat transfer coefficient is 300 watt per meter square degree kelvin and at a bulk temperature of 500 degree kelvin okay another boundary condition to be applied that is same boundary condition it will be convection at the outer surface so select on lines select the outer lines in the form of quadrants okay and it will be having convective heat transfer coefficient as 50 watt per meter square degree kelvin and bulk temperature will be 300 kelvin okay done now everything is done we have applied all our boundary conditions now we need to run it 
so we can run it from solution solve current ls if everything is right it will show solution is done okay it is showing solution is done so our solution is okay we can see our results from general post processing okay so let us close it general post processing plot results control plot or nodal solution and we can see nodal temperatures you can see temperature at different nodes you can see minimum temperature is 319.793 degree kelvin and maximum temperature is 486.764 kelvin right now the thing is you want to see temperature at the interfaces but at the same time you want to see nodal temperatures also right now we want to see list results you want to see the temperature at all the different nodes that can be viewed from list results so list results nodal solution nodal temperature it will show the temperature at all the different nodes right we can see it here itself node 1 is having temperature of 484 similarly node 2 also right nodes which are having same radius will be having same temperature you can see here different nodes are having different temperatures the nodes with same radius will be having same temperature you can see maximum absolute temperature is 486.76 at node number 69 right this is very important result so we can save it we can save it in the desktop okay now we want to see temperature at the defined interfaces that can be viewed from here query results subgrid solution and dual solution and temperature right so, okay now we can select the specific location at which we want to have temperature let us select the first interface it is having temperature of 486.753 kelvin second one we can select here yourself second interface is having temperature of 484.468 kelvin third interface this one we can select it is having temperature of 480.961 kelvin and the last interface this one is having temperature of 419.818 kelvin right we can annotate this one with generating 3d annotation okay so these are the temperatures at different interfaces right uh, so our task is solved so with this one we'll conclude our today's analysis this was a very simple analysis of a composite cylinder inside which we provided hot fluid at a temperature of 500 kelvin and convective heat transfer was 300 watt per meter square kelvin and outside it was having air at a temperature of 300 kelvin and convective heat transfer coefficient was 50 watt per meter square degree kelvin and after this analysis we got temperature at the different interfaces okay okay this is all about our today's video thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye if you like this video please subscribe and share and if you have any kind of doubts please write to me thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye